It's January and that means that it's time to file and distribute 1099s. In this video, I'll show you how to have your vendors set up in QuickBooks so that you're ready to file 1099s for them. And I'll show you how to go through the 1099 filing process in QuickBooks. This process has come a long way in QuickBooks in the last few years. And now QuickBooks is my preferred method to file 1099s. Because if you've kept up with keeping vendor information updated in QuickBooks throughout the year, they make it very straightforward to distribute those 1099s. The first thing that I'll show you is a 1099 information sheet that I like to use that just keeps track of the information for various 1099 vendors and also lets us track whether or not we've already sent them a 1099. If you want a copy of this template, I'll send it to you for free. Just go to my website, learnbookkeepingtoday.com, enter your email address, and I will email it over to you. Now let's go over to QuickBooks as well as that 1099 information sheet. The first thing that we need to do is make sure that we know who we are sending 1099s to. One way that I like to review to make sure that we're not missing anyone is to go to the expense by vendor report. So I go to expenses by vendor summary and set the date range to last year. This will show us all of the various expenses that we had with each vendor. There's another report, which is purchases by vendor. And we can go to that report as well to see what we purchased in terms of inventory or services or using the items line of a transaction. And we can see here that in this QuickBooks file, I actually didn't record any purchases last year. So I'll go back to expenses by vendor. I would recommend going through a list like this with your tax accountant and they can help you determine whether or not someone needs to get a 1099. But I can say looking through this, I set up this vendor called Awesome Agency, which is assumed to be an ad agency. We'll probably want to send them a 1099. They're over the $600 threshold. Law firms in general need to be sent a 1099. And then if we have any individuals that are over that $600 threshold. So this Dana Smith person was paid $500 and we can disregard them for this purpose as long as we have recorded all of their expenses using their name. So this does show the importance of making sure that you enter a vendor or payee on every transaction. Let's look at the 1099 information sheet that I've put together in Excel. So this is a template that we can use to collect all the information and make sure that we have the correct information for these vendors. So I listed a few here. The top two are examples. And like I said, you can get this template by going to my website. I'll link in the description below. Basically, we need to make sure that we have their address Ideally, an email address as well, because QuickBooks will let us email the 1099s to them. And then we need to have their tax ID. We also wanna make sure that we know which QuickBooks account we've posted their expenses to. I've got a couple of columns with conditional formatting here. If someone does not need a 1099, the whole row will go gray and we can just disregard them. If we have their 1099, we've updated all of their information in QuickBooks and have sent them the 1099, and we indicate those by entering yes into these fields, then they will turn green. If they're still red, it means that there's some action that we need to take. So looking through here, I can see that I've already entered the vendor information for these last two vendors. This is an individual who is a web designer and then our law firm but I have not entered all the information for this first vendor. So I'm gonna go over to QuickBooks and show you how to make sure that that is updated. We go to expenses and vendors. And just to note, this is the accountant view of QuickBooks Online, which I much prefer over the newer business view, which kind of consolidates and moves around a lot of these side menus. You can switch to the accountant view by going to the gear menu and choosing it over here. I'm gonna to go to that vendor and we can see that all we have in there is their name. 
So we need to edit them and put in their address information and other 1099 info. So I'll go ahead and put in this person's address. I'll put in their email address. And then the other extremely important thing is to check this checkbox for track payments for 1099 and put in their tax ID number. Now, for some reason, I don't know if it's a Google Chrome glitch or what, but this vendor information window has not been displaying correctly for me. These buttons should be below the rest of the other information, but that's okay. Now that we've got their name, their address, email address, and tax ID information along with that checkbox checked, we can save and close. Now what I'll do is I'll go over to this sheet and I'll indicate that yes, we have updated their information in QuickBooks Online. We still need to get a W-9 from this agency. It's best practice to get a W-9 for any vendor that you might need to 1099 before you even pay them for the first time. Just with their first invoice, you should also request a W-9. That way you've got it covered. Let's go ahead and use QuickBooks Online to file the 1099s for these three vendors who we've entered information for. The way to do this is to go to Expenses and Vendors, and then you see a button at the top for Prepare 1099s. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And now QuickBooks will walk us through this process. I'll click let's get started. And then it comes up with our company information. We need to enter a phone number. We need to make sure that our tax ID and our name and address are in there. Save and close and then go to the next step. Now we need to indicate which accounts go with which boxes on your 1099. The most common are gonna be this non-employee compensation. That's what we're paying general subcontractors, individuals, that kind of thing. We also have rents, and I didn't record any rent expense, but you do generally need to send a 1099 to landlords. And then you can see the other items here. So gross proceeds paid to an attorney. One of those vendors was a law firm. So we will set this QuickBooks account, Legal and Professional Services, that's where we recorded their expenses. We will set that for this 1099 box. So I'll go ahead and check that. And then at the top for non-employee compensation, we wanna make sure that we have, it looks like this contractor's one, and then down the line, we will probably use advertising and marketing because I believe we'll send our agency a 1099 using that box. So this does let you select multiple. I'll find contractors in here and then also advertising and marketing. And once we're happy with the different accounts that we've selected, we can go ahead and click next. Now we review our different contractors. I wanna make sure that the three that we had set up are in here and it looks like they are. There are also a couple of others that we may wanna review and see if we do need to send them 1099s. Maybe this Acme Creative is another agency type that we need to send a 1099 to. Joe Johnson is an individual. I honestly don't remember all the transactions that I recorded against him, but, but I believe that report indicated that we'd paid him over $5,000. So we should probably look into what that was for and if we need to send him a 1099. Now I'll go ahead and click next and QuickBooks will come up with the list of those contractors. You can see that they did automatically include Joe Johnson and Acme Creative. What that probably means is we did post at least a portion of their expenses to a category that shows up in that NEC non-employment income account. I probably want to go back to my 1099 list and make sure that I have their W-9 information and send them a 1099 after all. Now I'll click finish preparing 1099s and we can either have QuickBooks do it for us or we can print and mail them ourselves. I definitely prefer to have QuickBooks do it for us. So I click that e-file for me and this is where we select the specific ones that we wanna file. 
I'm going to unselect Joe Johnson and Acme Creative and just indicate that we are sending to these three. Then we click continue and QuickBooks will show us the total and we can set up our payment information for paying QuickBooks to do this for us. Now, this is where I'm gonna stop on this video. I'm not gonna go ahead and approve this because we don't actually want to send them in. But on the next section, we choose the delivery option, which gives us the option to send them by mail and or email. And I usually will choose both. Then we go ahead and finalize them and QuickBooks will take it from there. I'll click cancel from here. And what we see is we have those three forms in progress and none actually submitted so far. If we wanna continue with the e-filing, then we can go ahead and click this e-file and it takes us right back to that step. Going back to QuickBooks Online, we can go ahead and close out of this page. I'll close out again, but if we click continue, it did save our progress. We can see that those accounts are still selected. It's got the same list of contractors and we can continue finishing them. Now what I would do if I had finalized the filing is I would go over to this list and I would indicate that these three have been filed. This is the process of using QuickBooks Online to file your 1099s. If you have a question about whether a certain vendor should be sent to 1099, again, I would recommend talking to your tax accountant. They should be able to help you sift through a vendor list and identify who needs to receive one. Thanks for watching. If this video was helpful, please hit that like button. It will help more people find this video and learn how to file their 1099s using QuickBooks Online. While you're at it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so that you get alerts when I post a new video.